the goal today is um, I'm going to take this old Spartan horn I have, um, which I will show you guys. Uh, I've cleaned it up just enough where you can kind of uh, here. see the writing on it. Spartan. Uh, looks like something Michigan USA model number R214 as you can see the bell on here there's not much metal left this is really really thin I'm gonna save this for my um, display but I really am not gonna be able to salvage this uh, the metal is just way too thin uh, and any attempt to kind of spot weld it, it's just going to blow through um, and melt even more metal. So uh, I'm basically, it, rather than trying to refabricate this piece, um, I'm going to try another method. Now, one of the problems, even if I did refabricate it, then I would have to come in here and stamp it and everything, and I really don't have the stamps to do that. So... Uh, not in all those sizes. So this horn um, is really good for reference, um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna have to swap out a few parts on it, and hopefully the horn is the only thing that I I need to swap out. So I've gone through here. I have cleaned. I basically took my wire wheel, and I've just kind of cleaned some of these bolt heads where the rivets come through because I'm trying not to displace the rivets where the rivets just turn in the hole. I'm trying to get these nuts off. So um, I've cleaned up some of them and um, you'll see as I take this thing apart. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take all of this apart. I'm gonna probably put it in an electrolysis bath to clean off all the rust, minimize how much metal I lose. Then I'm gonna clean everything up and I'm going to attempt to reassemble this um, using as much of the original pieces from the Spartan horn as I can. And um, so just to start with, I, I've got my 6-volt battery right here. And um, obviously the first step is to let's make sure the horn actually works. So um, we are going to, if it works then um, probably most of the internal parts can be salvaged. So let me set this up here a second. And I've cleaned off some of these contacts. Let's see what we got. <laughs> so that is a very, very good sign uh, that um, that horn, at least internally, is intact. Uh, the parts maybe need to clean up and stuff. Uh, but anyway, so that is the project today. I'm going to start taking this part and cleaning it. And then I'm going to use this, um, suppose of, supposedly, um, original, um, or not original, but, uh, reproduction. It's supposed to be an exact reproduction that MV Spares makes. Uh, I've talked to Darcy quite a bit about this, so we'll see how close it really is. Um, it, it did come with um, the vibration uh, mounts. And so basically what I am going to do is I am going to take this repro horn and we're going to see how exact it is and any parts off my original Spartan that can't be salvaged, I am going to attempt to replace with parts from this. So one thing I know I need is I need to replace the bell on my original. So I'm a little curious on this repro. I've already measured it, and it is it is measured the same. Spartan. It's 
kind of hard to see the Jackson, but it is in there. Jackson, Michigan, USA. Jackson, Michigan. Michigan looks like it's maybe one point bigger than the original font. But otherwise, um, the original bell has an external roll. Now this one here only rolls back about 50%. I do have another one here and it shows a bigger roll that's almost all the way and then um, this is one I've already restored and it's got a bigger roll as well so um, that's just a little difference in the manufacturing so this roll is fine um, looking at them straight down Got a Spartan, I got a weep hole right here in the middle of the lettering. It looks like it's set up the same way here, a weep hole right, right here in the middle of the lettering. Um, it does, it looks like that, and this may just again be a difference in manufacturing. Um, And I'll try to set it up here so they sit right. It does look like the, at least the rivet holes where they line up with the weep holes is not quite the same. They're offset a little bit. There's three weep holes in each of these. So I don't know that that makes any difference at all. Um, the shape of the bell As far as the arc here does look the same and it looks like here at the base it's attached the same which it probably it basically there's a lip under here you can see it down in in the base there there's a lip where the cone fits over top and then um, then it's just basically soldered This is the same. And then you have the seam. You can see for the reproduction how the seam goes. It's kind of a double folded seam. Um, in my original, it also is a double folded seam with a little section missing out of the tip. Now I'll I've done a little bit of shaping on this um, because it was really pretty bent up first. But that looks pretty cool. I mean, that looks pretty close. And then you can see the diaphragm down in there. And then, so when I take it apart, we'll look at those diaphragms. We'll see how close they are. Um, but anyway, so there's a little introduction. That's kind of where we're going. I'm gonna first start by tearing down the Spartan horn, which does uh, function at the moment. So disassembling this bell, I have found, I'm trying to remove these riveted, these rivet nuts. So unfortunately, it looks like and let me see if I can put it where you can see. The rivets are not welded in there or anything. So when, obviously I'm trying to turn them, you can see the rivets turning with them. And this is the same for all of them. So I'm gonna use some penetrating oil, a little bit of heat, so I don't deform those rivets too much. And then, um, I'm gonna just have to clamp it a little bit, put a little bit of pressure on there while I loosen those uh, nuts, see if I can get it out. All right. I was able to gently get the Spartan horn apart, salvage all the parts. The in internals actually look pretty good for a 75 year old horn. 
and it did blow. So uh, just gonna clean those up. Use the internals. Probably just have to replace this bell. So hi Frontline guys. Um, so I've, it's a day later, uh, I've cleaned up all the Spartan parts. And so I wanted to show you um, with the original Spartan, I just wanted to point out some things. Um, first of all, for this one, it's extremely clear and clean inside. Well, I've cleaned it and then I did a little wash with a little bit of phosphate to protect some of these parts in here and clean that off. And um, so now it's gonna get a little coat of paint. But a couple things I wanted to point out is if you, you can kind of see the splines there where you've got the indents on that hole and that hole. And that's where your mounting nuts go, okay? So if you look at these mounting nuts, and I, these are all the originals, I cleaned them up. You look underneath them, these slot head screw heads, there are splines there. And I'm sure that's to give it a little more strength um, when it fits in there. But th this is the only place I saw those when I took this original apart. So there's two of those. And then going around the outside, you have um, four of these original all they are is a, um, a dome headed uh, screw and nut with a lock washer now these weren't welded in or anything they were just kind of there's just like a little bit of friction holding them in so this was a little challenging to get these out without tearing up the heads I was able to get them out and save all of them. So that's all the, the bolts. Um, this is a piece that fits on the diaphragm, which I cleaned up on the wire wheel. And obviously that looks excellent. The threads look excellent. Uh, the diaphragm itself, um, on the side that fits towards the external part of the horn, you can see it's got a lot of surface rust. And that's about 75 years of surface rust, but I cleaned that off, I've treated it, and we're gonna reuse this diaphragm because the horn did work. And then that is the internal facing side and it is, it is perfect. Now, one thing I did notice, and I have no idea what this means, but there is a small L stamped on the internal facing side of this diaphragm. And it was just an interesting find. So um, this is the piece that fits on top of the diaphragm. Again, I just cleaned that up really good. Did a little quick bath in the phosphate coating. And um, then uh, these are the nuts. Everything's been cleaned up. My insulators are in perfect condition. So I'm gonna reuse those. Well, in fact, all the internal. I'm going to reuse everything internally. Um, <clears throat> I did bathe and clean up the original horn a little bit. And that's allowed me to be able to see the specifics on the original lettering and stuff. And I'm going to put this on the shelf for my part of my display. Um, we're going to keep it. Um, but uh, anyway, just so you guys... I have something to reference later for the original horn. So now what I'm gonna do is uh, I am actually do a little update here before I paint it. So after cleaning up the original parts, you can see some of the original paint in here. Um, of note, there is no primer under this paint. It's uh, gloss black paint sprayed directly on the metal. 
And so when I repaint this, this that's exactly what I'm going to do. All right, Frontline. So part of this um, restoration video was to um, review this MV Spares reproduction 6-volt horn um, for the G503. And so as I take it apart, I'm going to compare some parts um, that way that you can see that. So I'm reusing this bellows part for the one I'm rebuilding. But I've got to take all these nuts and bolts off and so we're going to take a look at them as we go so this is what this is the dome rivet it be a little bit difficult to see but here, let's put it on something a little bit of contrast here so this is the dome rivet that comes off the mv spares one it's very similar, but it's not exact. Size-wise, it's a hair smaller. The dome is slightly different. However, diameter-wise, it looks, as far as the head goes, it looks correct. And when it's on there, it looks pretty correct. So, um... That's what's holding on this bellows here. So let me take these off. Obviously I have loosened them already with the wrench. Trying to uh, not spin the dome head bolt in there because I didn't, didn't want to I want to be able to get it out of there, obviously. Okay, so th these are the the nuts and slotted uh, bolt heads um, for the mounting. It's, this is an original. So I'm pulling those off right now. Just pull one off for the video purposes to show you. I'm gonna use my original screwdriver, put it to use. Now I mentioned a little earlier that this is these are painted gloss black. Actually, I'm almost positive it's actually supposed to be lacquer black. So what I will do when I put paint, when I paint the original bottom of, when I do the original bottom um, paint for the horn, I'm going to go ahead and shoot a coat on this so it matches. Uh, I'm not sure what's painted on here. It almost looks like satin black, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be lacquer. So... I'm just going to stick well anyway that's good enough for what I'm doing here I'm just putting the hardware back on the nut and bolts so that I don't lose it if I can get it with my big fat fingers okay it is, uh, this one is MV Spares, this one's original. The heads look to be pretty close, virtually identical. Um, now, one thing I did notice is the nut size on here is different. Uh, the one on the MV Spares is a 7 16th. Um, the one, the original one is a three eighths, but, um, to the eye, I don't, I don't know that you can tell the difference. And if you're looking, so 
I just screwed on that 3 8 inch nut from the original onto the same uh, bolt shaft. So it is the same, it's just the nut size is different. And I've noticed that a lot as I've gone through my Jeep that the nut size and the bolt size doesn't, they, they don't, they oftentimes don't match. <laughs> I don't know if that's, you know, over the years, some people swap out bolts and things like that. Um, I, I don't know if that's just a product of that. That's probably partly what it is anyway. So I got one more. So I've got the MV Sparrow's horn bellows separated. It lifts straight off. Okay. Bottom. This is MV Spares. Top. That is the original Spartan. Okay. A couple interesting things, and again, this is not going to affect the performance of your horn, okay? But I find it very, very interesting, okay? The contact wires in the reproduction, they're screws. The wires are soldered to the coil. Comes over, soldered to the coil, soldered to the little flange on the side, okay? You see that? Now, on the original, these were built in assemblies, meaning that different parts were built and then it was put together. So if you look at, hold on a second, I'm gonna change my camera view. So, to continue, so when this was assembled on the assembly line, it was put together, um, this, the horn was put together in assemblies, meaning that you had this section was being built over there by Rosie the Riveter. Then you had this section being put together by another guy. And then this section was being put together by someone else. And then there was somebody that assembled this. So if you look on this, you'll see that this center part was assembled first. It was attached in there first, okay, and lined up. Then this long bar here, which is actually um, your set bar to set your um, sound, basically your uh, decibel levels. And there's a set screw right here. As you turn that, it adjusts how much it vibrates, how loud the horn is. A Jeep horn should be 110 decibels. So before we finish this horn, we'll be setting that. So that would be the second section that was put in. And it, you see here, was aluminum riveted. Okay? Or actually, I'm sorry, that's a steel rivet. A hollow steel rivet was put through here and mushroom them, and that's what fit that side. And then if you look closely under here, your set screw comes through here and contacts this bar. <clears throat> now, the third assembly to put in is this whole piece here, okay? Which on the repro would be this piece. And you see again, it's riveted in two places, and that's put in. And in this assembly is basically a sandwich of insulators and things, okay? Um, it's screwed in and there's absolutely not enough room to get in there and do that without ha having not having done this as a separate assembly. You would have to have microscopic hands to be able to do that, okay? Um, now of interest is that once those assemblies were in, 
they wired it, okay? So this little, we'll call it a flathead, you know, this is basically a dome um, screw. If you notice, they turned up the sides of that. And that's probably so they could get grip on it when they screwed in through the insulators and they set it into the cap there, okay? MV spares, theirs is just done with nuts um, and bolts, uh, slot head screw and bolt. Again, this is an, an internal feature and probably doesn't make a lick of difference. Um, but in the original, it wasn't soldered. It was wrapped around that nut. You can see there on top of that black square insulator. And then it was tightened in from the, the back side. The wires coming off here. This one comes straight off the coil. And this one doesn't even have insulation on it. Okay, it's now it's not touching anything else, but um, then you have the wire from the other, the insulated wire, and this is insulated, comes around the coil. And if you look closely, there's actually a blob of solder with a hole in it that that wire was stuck up through and bent over, okay? And then on the other side, coming off the bottom of the coil, the wire wraps around and there is a little fork clip there. And basically it goes over top of the one fork, which is bent over it. And then it goes underneath the second fork. And it's not soldered either. Um, now this one's soldered for the MV Spares one, but the fork is there, so um, again, these are internal features, and they're not going to make a difference with actually the function of the horn. But they were interesting. I thought I'd point them out. All right, so a couple things I wanted to point out. I, I bought this MV Spares horn, this reproduction horn for 60 bucks, and that included the uh, mounting bracket hardware. And... If you need a horn, I mean, it's really an awesome deal. Um, and one thing I pointed out is about how this was assembled. It was put together in assemblies. And these assemblies in the MV Spares horn are close enough that I could actually drill out these rivets and use them if I needed in my original Spartan. Now, I don't need them. But all these insulators and everything, other than a couple of the little screws, um, are close enough, virtually identical, at least in performance, that I could use those parts if I needed to. And um, that was the reason I bought the horn. So uh, that is a plus because I have several more horns to rebuild and I'm going to use parts from this if as I need to. So uh, now I'm gonna warm up some of these parts, get the black lacquer ready, and I'm gonna shoot some paint. Uh, this is the bellows that came off of the MV Spares horn. Note it has a little paper gasket in here. Uh, interestingly, when I separated the original horn, it did not have a gasket in there. Um, so, um, all right, so uh, continuing on uh, with my Spartan horn rebuild, um, turns out the points um, needed some cleaning and stuff. So I've had to kind of dive into the guts of this a little more than I really wanted to. Um, but this will be good for you guys. So you'll get to see how this goes together. So the first thing I, I had to do is basically drill out the two rivets on either side here. So I could take this assembly out. The points are right here. Um, 
but you have a sandwich of multiple layers of stuff underneath here. And really, um, I could not find a way to kind of work with this without having to take the whole assembly out. So that's what I'm doing right now is uh, I'm pulling out this assembly so that I can clean the points, um, clean the contacts, uh, and everything. So um, just kind of base, I've already pulled some of the wires off. This is basically your, your wire coming straight off of the battery. Um, and I've got a piece of tape on here because I don't want to lose the screw that holds this little flange. Uh, here, I'll pull it off and I'll tape it back up. So there's a little soldered flange on here. And then, obviously, the screw. And that screws in right here. Okay into this top plate that appears to be aluminum with, um, or it's actually just a um, conductor, probably is aluminum with the points right there. Um, so I've gone ahead and pulled this wire off. Now of interest is the fact that this little flange is not actually soldered on. There's a blob of solder with a hole drilled in here, and the wire just gets poked through there and bent over. Um, and I'm sure that was a manufacturing speed issue. Uh, it made it a little faster for them to assemble these. Um, and then you have the wire on this side coming off of the magnet, and that just comes under here, clips up underneath this clip, bends around the other side of the clip, and it just stays. So these... Neither of these are actually soldered in. They're just kind of, um, they're just bent in around the contacts. So I don't want to lose the screw. So I'm just going to put some tape around here, pull the wire out of the way. I've already just unhooked this wire. It just basically goes around the clip. I'm just going to pull that out of the way. And then I'm going to just start pulling off this this assembly um, one layer at a time to see show you how uh, it goes together now the rivets that held this in okay let's see if I can get up here so you can see it these are they're just a little flat uh, let's see if you can see them I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it but it's a little flat rivet where the head of it is a little bit hollow. And this allows you to be able to flare out the head um, with, without much force. Um, so this would be, you can still get these rivets at Ace Hardware. And that's where I'm going to go pick me up a couple when whenever I'm ready to reassemble. Um, but I'm just going to set these off to the side for now and I'm going to show you okay so this little triangle plate right here this is the your top points and I already have the screws are already loosened so this should just wiggle right off so so this is your top plate. If you look at it on the bottom, there's your points. Now I've already cleaned up this point, um, basically with some sandpaper, and I'm just gonna set it off to the side here. Um, underneath the, the points, the top points, is an insulator pad, which is basically the same shape as the points, little fiber, fiberboard insulator. And that just goes right up underneath there with a little bit of space so that the points stick out past the insulator. Okay. So I'm going to set that here. Um, the next item is the, really the whole assembly kind of comes out. 
Um, there's another, there's your bracket. Underneath it is a little two layers of insulation. So you'll see a layer, which is probably lightly glued in there. Um, and then you have another triangle piece that's glued underneath it. And this hole is where the points stick through. And that hole there, the middle hole, uh, that's kind of a guide hole that lines all these parts up when you reassemble it. So I'll set that here in the order that all this kind of goes back together. Underneath that plate, is your other your bottom points and this is probably part of my problem okay and you can see how corroded it is um, the points are a little bit burnt so I'm gonna clean these points off. I'm gonna just basically clean this whole metal plate and um, we'll reuse that and that slides up underneath there so I don't lose it and then underneath it this is where this right side wire comes off of the magnet. And this is, in here, you get a good close-up look of the clip. Um, let me see if I can get it focused. And when you route the wire, uh, when it gets routed on here, when you're reassembling, the wire routes, it comes up this direction, it goes around this prong and underneath that prong, okay? So around the top prong, which is bent up, bent down and then underneath the other prong. Pardon my shaking hand here. Let's see if we can get, get it still for you to see. Well, that might be a better view. So you, it comes up over this piece, down and around. And this metal piece is pretty corroded as well, and that's probably part of my problem. Um, so I'll clean that up as well so I have good contacts. That will go up underneath that piece. And then you have another small insulator. And you have basically the nut backing plate. Okay, that holds that whole assembly together. And that there's just not enough room in there to get under there to hold everything, line everything up to re, you know, basically fix it, clean it, and put it back together. Not with my big hands, so I allotted to um, take it apart, and I'm going to clean it. Once you get it taken apart, you can see this is where it goes. This is how this here adjust aligns up with your adjustment screw and lifts or lowers the points so that um, and also adjusts the horn volume by doing so. Okay, and this is where your mounting plate goes in. It rivets into these two holes, and then that, that whole component that I just saw, showed you sets up in here. Um, now, earlier I posted um, that I posted incorrectly. So, if you look on the back of the diaphragm, you have that, that little plate. That's what kind of gets flexed with the magnet and pushes the points. The little tab that sticks up right here, that actually sets right on top of the edge of that um, insulator plate next to the points, okay? And that's what kind of pushes, when the, point, when they get, the points get charged, uh, it closes, it lifts it up, um, when, uh, the magnetic releases, it opens up and it pushes down and that, that's what makes your horn go. So, uh, anyway, so I got some parts to clean up. Um, I'm going to do that right now. Um, and I will show you the reassembly, how it's supposed to go together. And with some luck, we will get it all working and sounding just like the original. Um, so stay tuned. All right, I've cleaned up all these little parts, cleaned up the points. The top point, it's burnt down a little bit, but it's still got some 
um, life left in it. My concern is this bottom set of points. If you look at it, it really is almost is pretty much flush with the insulator. Um, so I'm not sure if that how that's going to work. Um, if you look at the repro that I picked up from MV Spares, and you look in there pretty close. Um, let's see if you can get a good view. The points in here are actually pretty tall. I mean, obviously, they're brand new points. Um, I may, you know, I, the reason I bought this MV Spares Repro was supposedly the guts were um, almost identical. So um, I, I'm going to reassemble this. Um, I'll just, instead of riveting it in, I will um, just bolt it in initially, and I'll test it with the original points. If I can't get it working correctly at 110 decibels, then I will go ahead and take those bolts back out. Um, I'll disassemble this assembly in the MV Spares Repro. And I'm going to take the points out of this and put it in um, the original Spartan horn that I have. So um, stay tuned and let's see how that goes. Good morning, Frontline Motorpool. I thought I'd give you guys an update. I did complete my Spartan Horn rebuild. Um, initially, I did a partial rebuild. I didn't want to dig too deeply into the guts of it. Um, but when I reassembled it, uh, the horn would not function. So I ended up having to do a complete rebuild, uh, as you saw with the videos. And... Um, the MV spare parts I used was really only the horn of the MV spares um, repro horn. Uh, I didn't use any of the internal guts, um, although everything looked like it would have uh, worked perfectly if I needed to. Um, I did paint uh, the original base and the horn with black lacquer and um, I adjusted the settings. So a uh, couple tips and tricks. Um, obviously the horn that when I re rebuilt it, I used the original points in it and they were about halfway wore down. So I used the paper gaskets um, as a spacer rather than sticking another washer in there. And I just one at a time until I got the depth correct uh, for to push and open the contacts. Um, I tested that before I put the horn together, uh, before I put the uh, actually the cone on the horn, and to make sure the magnet was working and releasing. Uh, then I put it together. Now for setting the horn, I dialed in the rear screw all the way, and I did half a turn at a time until um, I had enough slack in there to open the contact and close it. Okay, and then I just adjusted it because I didn't have a lot of points left. Um, uh, I really couldn't set it. I couldn't get it set to 110 decibels, which is what it should be. Uh, the best I could get was 116 decibels, uh, but it's smooth sound. It works now and it's great. So I will be posting up uh, how to thread with lots of pictures on our Frontline Motor Pool website, which is coming up soon. And uh, I'll post this video online for on YouTube for you guys to watch. All right. Happy jeeping.